Welcome viewers. Today in this session, I'll be talking about the different applications of restriction enzymes. I'll be talking about how restriction enzymes are very important for the study of modern biology. Well, restriction enzymes were first discovered by Stuart Lynn and Werner Erber in the year 1960. These are basically endonucleases which are synthesized by the bacterial cell. The applications of restriction enzymes are quite diverse. It is used in the field of recombinant DNA technology to study or to create a genetic or a modified genetically organism. It is used in the field of epigenetics to study the epigenetic pattern. It is used in the study of forensics to identify a criminal behind a crime scene. It is used to determine the copy number of a particular gene in its genome and so on. Now first let us see what are restriction enzyme. As shown in this slide, we can see restriction enzyme which are synthesized by bacterial cell as an innate immunity or a part of innate immunity. These kind of enzymes are synthesized by the cell in order to protect themselves from foreign attack by the bacteriophages. These are endonucleases and these endonucleases recognize a particular set of bases and after recognizing they cleave the phosphodiester backbone and at those particular sites. Now thus with the knowledge of restriction enzymes, now it is possible to develop the wide applications of restriction enzyme. Let us now see how the evolution of restriction enzymes took place. It was first initiated in the year of 1952 to 53, where host induced variation of bacterial viruses were first described. After that, there was the characterization of first type 1 restriction endonucleases followed by type 2 restriction endonucleases. After which, in the year of 1975, a restriction enzyme database was launched along with the technique restriction fragment length polymorphism analysis was also developed. Now following the importance or knowing the importance of restriction enzyme, it was in the year of 1978, Nobel Prize in Physiology was awarded to three scientists for the discovery and study of restriction enzymes. Over 1000 restriction endonucleases were identified by the year 1988 followed by the cloning or the adaptation of the cloning methods and in the year of 1996 zinc finger nucleases were developed and this zinc finger nucleases were used as a gene disruption and insertion technology. Thus we can see how the knowledge of restriction enzymes slowly and slowly evolved with the human mankind. Now let us see what are the applications. The applications, as I have already told you, are quite diverse. It includes its application in recombinant DNA technology. It includes its application in restriction mapping, in RFLP, in southern blotting, in DNA fingerprinting, as well as in epigenetics. Well, the restriction enzymes are a part of innate immunity of bacteria. Thus, the restriction enzymes might be helpful to induce the innate immunity of human beings as well. So with this, the functional uses of restriction enzymes has been enumerated. Now let us see how it is applied. If we look at this slide, we can see that the restriction enzymes are the first forms of foremost application in recombinant DNA technology. As the name suggests, it helps in creating recombinant DNA. Recombinant DNA is nothing but a mixture of two different kinds of DNA. Now, with the help of restriction enzymes, now foreign gene can be cloned or isolated from any organism. It has been found that if two DNA from two different sources are cleaved with the same restriction enzyme, then it generates an identical pair of sticky ends. This identical pair of sticky ends then recombines or reannuls with the help of hydrogen bond to form a recombinant DNA. 
Now, this recombinant DNA is the basis for cloning of all particular or foreign genes. Now, as we can see, the vector which carries the foreign DNA has got special sequences where the foreign gene can be incorporated. Again, the sequences which are known as the, or the sites are known as the polylinker or multiple cloning sites contain sites for the different restriction enzymes and it facilitates the insertion of insert into this particular sites. After the generation of recombinant DNA, now it is transformed to a bacterial cell. The bacterial cell is allowed to propagate or to multiply and thereby the foreign gene produces foreign protein which accumulates within the bacterial cell and forms the different application of the biotech industry. So let us see the applications of RDT. Now, the molecular biology or recombinant DNA technology has revolu revolutionized the biotech industry. With this diagram, we can see that the gene or any foreign gene can be isolated from any desired organism and then it is cloned to a vector to form recombinant DNA with the help of restriction enzymes and then it is allowed to multiply within the bacterial cell and it leads to the production of important molecules. Important biomolecules such as hormones like insulin, follicle stimulating hormone, erythropoietin, growth hormone have been produced in such a way and as a result it has decreased the cost price of this particular hormones. On the other hand, the generation of genetically modified organism finds an extensive application in agriculture, in the bioremediation purpose or in clearing of oil spills. So in this way, restriction enzymes form the first pillar of RDT. Moving on, coming to the sequencing. We know that if we want to know a gene, first we have to know its DNA or the sequences of the bases present in the gene. In earlier time, the most popular method of sequencing was random shotgun sequencing method. In this, as we can see, the DNA was first isolated, then it was cut with the help of restriction enzyme to shorter fragments and which was cloned into a BAC or bibacterial artificial chromosome. Computer programs then reused the overlapping ends of different repeats to reassemble them into a long continuous sequence. Now with the advent of high throughput technologies present in the field of sequencing, we have the human genome project or the human genome completely been unraveled. It is with the help of these kind of sequencing method that human genome project has been successful. So moving on again to another important point that is restriction mapping. Restriction mapping which shows or denotes what are the different restriction sites present within the foreign gene or present within the bacterial vector. So it helps in guiding the gene manipulation or in gene cloning. For this first the bacteria is allowed to multiply and then the plasmid DNA is isolated from the cells put into the separate experimental tubes and then digested with a series of restriction enzymes. After digestion, the DNA fragments are separated by running it on a gel electrophoresis and this gel electrophoresis or the bands obtained are compared with the known markers and reassembled or constructed or reoriented to construct a restriction map. This diagram shows a restriction map for the vector PBR322. Let us come to a very important application of restriction enzyme. This is known as restriction fragment length polymorphism abbreviated as RFLP. Now RFLP studies the variation in the pattern of fragment produced when the two DNA are digested with the same restriction enzyme. Now the variation in the pattern of fragment produced is due to the variation in the nucleotide sequence. This variation in nucleotide sequence is caused by the polymorphism present in the alleles. As a result, the RFLP is a very useful technique in the study of genetic markers as well as in the study or mapping of genes. 
let us see how RFLP can be used in mapping diseases. This slide shows a disease which is known as sickle cell anemia. Now here the DNA has been taken from three different sources. One the normal gene, one containing sickle cell anemia or sickle cell allele, another is heterozygous. Now after which they are first digested with restriction enzyme. The restriction fragments obtained are run on an agarose gel, blotted through the blotting apparatus to a nitrocellulose membrane and after which it is hybridized with a probe or with a radioactively labeled probe which is complementary to the beta globin gene. The number of fragments has been shown here or the gene fragments which have been produced or the DNA fragments or the restricted fragments has been shown here. What we can see? We can easily identify the pattern. Type 1 stands for normal allele, type 2 stands for sickle cell allele, type 3 is heterozygous. Thus, the co-inheritance of a disease-causing allele as well as a RFLP marker of present in a known chromosome location are both physically linked and they are inherited together. The next is the southern blotting. The southern blotting is a useful technique which helps in determining the copy number. First described by Edward Southern, here the first the DNA is taken and then it is restricted digested with the help of enzyme where we can isolate the particular gene of interest then run on an agarose gel blotted onto a nitrocellulose membrane and then it is hybridized with a radioactively labeled probe. In this way it help us to determine the copy number or paralogs of a gene. It help us to study the polymorphism present within a gene population as well as in recombinant DNA technology or in transgenics, it helps us to understand whether the foreign gene has become integrated into the genome or not. Well, this is a very important technique, the DNA fingerprinting technique. DNA fingerprinting technique is very important. We have seen in plenty number of serials that whenever there is a crime which is committed at the scene, then the culprit is identified with the help of this DNA fingerprinting technique. This is majorly used in forensic science. The DNA fingerprinting technique is based on the fact that eukaryotes contains a large number of repetitive sequences. The repeat sequences vary in their length among different individuals and the number of repeats is characteristic for that individual. Thus the fingerprints produced is or helps us to identify that particular individual. As shown in this diagram we can see that the repeat sequences are cut with the restriction enzyme HA3 then electrophoresis is done and then again the southern blotting is done and then it is hybridized to the labeled mini satellite DNA and developed or the autoradiography is done. Let's see its application that is the application of DNA fingerprinting technique. The first application is in forensic science. As you can see the DNA sample has been collected from the crime scene and then a fingerprint pattern is produced. Now this fingerprint pattern is matched with the two suspect and it can be easily seen that suspect B matches or the fingerprint pattern of suspect B matches completely with the fingerprint pattern obtained from the crime scene. So thus in this way we can identify the culprit behind the crime scene. Another important test which helps is DNA paternity test. We know that the closely related individuals similar or exhibit similar kind of fingerprint pattern whereas distantly related individuals show dissimilarity in their fingerprinting pattern. As we can see that the daughters D1 and D2 are they or they have the same kind or similar kind of fingerprint pattern as compared with that of their dad. Whereas the son S2 has got a different fingerprint pattern which does not match with the fingerprint pattern of this dad. Thus in this way we can determine the paternity testing of an individual. Well this is a very important point, the genomic library. The library which means a collection of books. Similarly genomic library refers to the total collection of a gene present in an organism. Now for smaller genomes like prokaryotes, genomic library is constructed. 
For the construction of genomic library, first the genomic DNA is isolated, then it is cut with restriction enzyme. Following cut, the restriction enzyme it is cloned into a plasmid vector and then it is transformed into bacteria. Thus, the bacterial colonies carries different clone fragments of DNA. Genomic library, it is always seen that each clone gene contains at least one copy of the gene. Now, what happens in eukaryotes? Since the eukaryotes genes are long, so the genomic library is not constructed. There, it is the cDNA library. For construction of cDNA library, the first the mRNA is collected from an individual, then it is converted to cDNA with the help of reverse transcriptase. The cDNA is ligated to adapters which contain sites for restriction enzymes. Both the cDNA as well as the vectors are cleaved with the same restriction enzymes, then they are ligated and transformed. The library which is produced in the bacterial cell are nothing but represents amplification of the cDNA library and these produces actively transcribing genes. Thus, with the help of again restriction enzymes, the first step of the cDNA library is constructed or it helps in the construction of cDNA library. Let us now see epigenetics. Epigenetics is a very interesting phenomenon of the 21st century. It is now found that everything is related to the pollution or to the environment which we are living in. Now, with the help of restriction enzyme, we can now differentiate between the DNA methylation pattern of a particular gene. Now, this has been possible with the help of two enzymes. The two enzymes are HPA2 and MSP1. Now, with this help of these two enzymes or these two enzymes possess different sensitivities to the DNA methylation modification. Now, as we can see here that MSP1, it is able to recognize the internal methylated cytosine and thereby cleave it there. Whereas HPA2 is not able to recognize the methylated sequence and cannot cleave the modified DNA. As a result, with the help of these two sets of enzyme, we can differentiate between locus specific discrimination between methylated and unmethylated alleles of a particular gene, which will help in studying the epigenetics. Thus, restriction enzymes are just wonderful agents or wonderful creations of the bacterial cell. Restriction enzyme plays a very pivotal or an important role in recombinant DNA technology. With the help of recombinant DNA technology, we can produce important biomolecules. Biomolecules such as insulin, growth factors, follicle stimulating hormone, erythropoietin and all can be created and sold in the market. Apart from this, it helps us in understanding the copy number of genes with the help of southern blotting. It helps us in understanding or in creating the restriction mapping which helps during the recombinant DNA technology as well as through RFLPs or restriction fragment length polymorphism, the different or the mapping of diseases can be done as well as it helps in identifying the crime or the suspects behind the crime scenes. It helps in epigenetics. Thus, restriction enzyme are just wonderful enzymes. Thank you.